the Country Riders Snowmobile Club and the Tatro family would like to thank the following sponsors. United Ag and Turf, your local John Deere dealership in Newport, Vermont. The Pick and Shovel, hardware, footwear, clothing, pets, ice cream, and so much more on Coventry Street in Newport, Vermont. The Junction Restaurant, fine family dining on Route 101 in Troy, Vermont. Waltz Sales and Service, your dealer for Ski-Doo, Can-Am, and Sea-Doo in Derby, Vermont. South Bay Auto and Industrial Supply, your hometown Napa Auto Parts dealer in Newport, Vermont. Majestic Trophy, awards, engraving, and embroidery in Derby, Vermont. The Troy General Store, your one-stop shop in Troy, Vermont. And Juddy's Septic Service and Portable Toilet Rentals in Morgan, Vermont. Also, this video is made possible by Mike at the Vintage Snowmobile Podcast. I do a live podcast every Thursday at 9 p.m. Search for the Vintage Snowmobile Podcast on Facebook and YouTube to find episodes of the podcast. And I am your independent Amsoil dealer. Call or text me at the number on the screen for your free Amsoil catalog or ask me how to get the deepest discounts and free shipping on your next Amsoil order. Well, good morning, friends. We're here in Newport Center, Vermont. The Country Riders Snowmobile Club in Newport Center, Vermont, as well as the Tatro family, are putting on a vintage snowmobile show today. We're going to take a look at that real quick, but I wanted to give some love to the Snowmobile Club because they've got a lot to do with this show. So let's pan across. People are still showing up, but this is what we've got so far. And uh, good times are already being had. Inside that building, there's food, trophies. They've got a porta potty over there, and here's where the trucks are parked. It's uh, yeah, it's a good time. So let's uh, start looking at some sleds. We'll take a look at these up, these close, these sleds that are the closest to us. Early '60s ski doos. So Dan, Dan Field. The Field family is here today, Reg and Dan Field. They like the older sleds, which we're going to take a look at. I was talking with Reg earlier. These are really beautiful shape. Now they also own that snow traveler over there. And if we're lucky, maybe we can catch some of them for interviews. This first one is a 63. I think the other one is a 60, 65. Okay, so a 65 and a 63. I like these little backpacks that you could get for them as an accessory. Kohler engines in these things. And we've got sleds coming here. What do we got? I think a Polaris. Maybe for the 90s or early 2000s. Look at some of these sleds over here. We've got a Yamaha 433 GPX. 433F. Does that mean fan cooled, I'm assuming? It's a 74 GPX 433 owned by Greg Starr. Very nice. Now another Yamaha by Greg Starr, 79 Enticer. Hi. Thank you. Appreciate it. So we'll go around the back side of these and then we'll take a look at that rub. And the people who've shown up on their modern sleds doing some trail riding.
Now this Rub Rebel belongs to Ray Parento who's here. We can probably catch him at some point for a few words on that. It's kind of a hybrid, I believe. A mix of different sleds, different parts. Yeah, my buddy. It's a 74 Snow Pro owned by Ray Parento. <laughs> Over here we've got an early 70s TX that's going for a closer look. 72 Polaris ATX it says. Dean Stratton. Dean Staten or Stratton? I think it's Stratton. TX-335. He's still kicking. He's still in snowmobiles, huh? Yeah. Oh, yeah. He, he, that's all he does is work in snowmobiles. I got my toys and all my bunks and snowmobiles and motorcycles. It's pretty cool to see it. When you're driving by, it's obvious. So, for this row over here, what I'm going to do is just kind of do a walk down the row. And then. Uh, and we'll get some individual shots of some of the sleds and maybe even catch up with some of the owners for interviews. But here's the, I've never done that thing. the lineup here. Beautiful sleds. You have to come back down on the same train or It got to where if you were lucky if you got four or five rides and then I you know.
top is. Country Riders Snowmobile Club and the Tatro family would like to thank the following sponsors. United Ag and Turf, your local John Deere dealership in Newport, Vermont. The Pick and Shovel, hardware, footwear, clothing, pets, ice cream, and so much more on Coventry Street in Newport, Vermont. The Junction Restaurant, find family dining on Route 101 in Troy, Vermont. Waltz Sales and Service, your dealer for Ski-Doo, Can-Am, and Sea-Doo in Derby, Vermont. South Bay Auto and Industrial Supply, your hometown Napa Auto Parts dealer in Newport, Vermont. Majestic Trophy, awards, engraving, and embroidery in Derby, Vermont. The Troy General Store, your one-stop shop in Troy, Vermont, and Juddy's Septic Service 
and portable toilet rentals in Morgan, Vermont. Also, this video is made possible by Mike at the Vintage Snowmobile Podcast. I do a live podcast every Thursday at 9 p.m. Search for the Vintage Snowmobile Podcast on Facebook and YouTube to find episodes of the podcast. And I am your independent Amsoil dealer. Call or text me at the number on the screen for your free Amsoil catalog or ask me how to get the deepest discounts and free shipping on your next Amsoil order. My name is Doug Matton. I inquired this from my grandfather, Matton, and this used to be his uh, wife's sled, my grandmother. Uh, he bought it brand new for her, to my understanding, and I just like riding it and like playing with it. Nice. That's about all I can really tell you about it. Sure. How long have you had it? Oh, probably eight years, nine years now. Yeah. If not more. Nice. And it's been in the family all these years? Yep. It's always been in our family. Nice. Yep. And you were saying it's pretty much original, right? It is all original, yeah. Nice. And, and where was it? You said he painted it? He had painted on the running boards. You can see the different color. In the, oh, yes, yeah. In the running boards from here. Yeah. And he had painted the front bumper. Oh, yes, yeah. Yeah. But other than that, it's all original. It runs original. Everything goes good on it. it runs good? Yep. Wonderful. So... You feel like starting it up? I can. Yeah, that'd be great. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Yeah, it's even got a horn. Oh, no way. He put a horn on it. Yeah. Wow. That's amazing.
Field. I'm from Grantham, New Hampshire. These are my two sleds. It's a 65 Skidoo Chalet, and it's got the uh, eight-horse Kohler engine, which is yellow because these came out of Elliott and Hutchins out of Malone, New York. So these are the last of the of the Kohlers when they were when Bombardier was using them. And pretty much, even at Elliott and Hutchins, these engines were installed there in Malone. Not at the factory. Wow. So, uh, this is the last of kind of the bulldog look. 66 when the seats turned black, had the black stripe on the hood, and this is kind of the last of these, you know, people like the V on the front, you know, because it's kind of, you know, sometimes they say it would stand for Valcor. Mm. You know, um, this is a 63. This also has a Kohler, which they were they were offered, um, but like trappers and you know fishing game or power companies, they kind of like the uh, the Kohler engine. Th this one came out of uh, Timberland yeah, in uh, uh, Lancaster. Lancaster. Yes, yeah, yeah. And and some of them when they came to the states, um, they did not have an engine due to the tariff. So the engine would be put on in the United States. Um, this sled here was a friend of mine who since passed away. He was uh, Frank Scott out of Alfred, Maine. And he, had re he restored this sled. And I've owned it for probably eight or nine years now. Um, but, you know, they kind of kind of sound like a lawnmower, you know, and they... When you know, it's a four stroke, and this is a seven horse, that's an eight horse. Um, you know, they would probably go about 15, 18 miles an hour, you know, if you were zipping right along with it. But um, as you can see, both of these have uh, the bicycle generator lights. Oh, wow. There's no lighting coil in these engines. Oh, look at that. So you can see that. So it's a, this is a, a Miller. Um, light system, so what you would have had on a bicycle. I remember and those. This one is the same way. The headlight is correct. They also put them on the Rotex, but this is basically a lantern bat, a lantern light bulb in that, which runs off the generator. I remember those on bicycles too. Yeah, yeah. no yeah. kidding. So the gas cap on these older Skidoo's. If this was been a, a two-stroke, you would fill this with oil. And that would be your mixture. You would know where you yeah. have the correct mixture. To. So, but being a four-stroke, you know, puts your oils right in, right in the engine. Sure. This has got some accessories on it. It's got the accessory bumper, accessory luggage rack, and rear bumper. Um, you know, just to make it a little more comfortable to, you know, especially to move things, you know, move the sled around. Yeah. So. But that's pretty much it. It does have the accessory, you know, Skidoo saddlebags. So Those saddle are nice. Bags. And that was sold as an accessory back that's in the day? Accessory, yeah. Yep. yep. That's a good idea, you know, because yeah. you're going to have things you need to carry with you. Right. So you can see the Timbaland. Uh, oh, the logo. Yeah. Yeah, logo right there. Um, wow. And on the other one, I'm pretty sure I have an Elliot. Yeah, has so it gives you, tells you, you know, the, all the specs, you know. Very cool. And then that badge, what is on that badge? That's, that's your, that's your serial number. Okay, yeah. Yep. So you can actually, not so much 65, 65, they're just producing just so many sleds. That they weren't inventory, they would inventory them, but you can't call back now and get any information from from sixty, well fifty nine up to sixty four. You you can find out the day it was built and where it went. Well, and because Bombardier had a handwritten ledger, so which is nice, you know, so you can do that. Um, I've got a, I have a 62 Skidoo, and I have a 64. So the 64, um, that one was built August 1st of 1964, and it went to, to Timberland. So they, you know where the machine basically goes to the distributor. Sure. Yeah. But 
it's kind of nice, you know. Once they once they really started mass producing them, they just couldn't keep up with how many to. Uh, yeah, it starts to, getting cumbersome, I it, imagine. Correct. Yeah, they just they level. would have a you know they would have a, a ledger book, but by that time they knew where sure. the majority of their stuff was going. Yeah. Oh yeah, they're fun to ride, and you know it's a great event here. And yes, so this is our third year here, so nice. makes it nice. Well, cool. Well, yeah, I really appreciate it. No problem. Cool. Actually, I'm going to try to get footage of this going yep. by. Perfect timing. Those have come a long way too. Oh yeah. Back when I was a kid, they mostly towed the drags with those alpines. That's right. This is a step or two above that, I'll tell you. Exactly. Maybe even three. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning, how you doing? So this is the snow runner. Typical barn find. Didn't even know they existed. And uh, they were a little research on them. They were um, 1980. Uh, Chrysler Corporation made them, and uh, they were spec'd out actually for the military and to help bail out Chrysler. And there was about 30,000 of them made, I was told. And it's a neat little unit, and it gets around. Um, not all I really know about it. Still get parts for it, which is kind of nice. Really? Yeah. Uh, you know, online research. So Yeah, eBay, stuff like that. And it runs great, and it's kind of a fun little thing, <laughs> kind of a little novelty thing. Kind oh, of. for sure. Uh, that's kind of really all I know about it. It comes apart. It can go right in the back of a car, four or five pins. And, wow. And, uh, Show me where the where you'd pull that apart. To, so was this one of the pins here? Yeah, you got, yeah, you got a pin here, and a pin at the ski, and then there's one under the seat, and basically it just goes right into a trunk of a car. Or... Where was the one by the seat? Uh, I think it's... Give me a second here. Oh, right in the back. Here. Right in the back. It's in the back. Cool. I don't know if it'll yeah. get it. No, I don't cool. know either. Be up in here, and it's pretty lightweight. I don't know if uh, uh -huh. you know what I mean. It's very light. Yeah. Nice. And dangerous. Dangerous. I'll bet. Yeah. It's funny because I've seen it. Only seen a few of these over the years. Well, that's. But this is the first time I've ever seen one ridden when you came in on it. Yeah. So I mean, like that. I thought it was pretty neat. I stumbled on it, and uh, it was for sale, and I wanted it because it's rare to me. It was rare. I never yeah, it. very unique. Yeah. And it ran great. You know what I mean? I it, call it the barn find. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's rare to see them. You're right. Oh, and, the, and the, so this is the gas tank here. Yep. The gas tank's right here. So it doubles as a frame and a gas tank. Yep. Yep. Two stroke and. So you put a mix in there? Yeah. Yeah, it's a regular mixed fuel. And it holds, what, a gallon, gallon and a half? Or? I'm not really sure, but yeah, about that. You know, yeah. I haven't really rode it a lot to know what its fuel mileage is, but sure. really, not really after that, if you know what I mean. Sure, just to enjoy. Yep, just to enjoy. Very cool. Uh, that's kind of all I really know about this one. Sure. <laughs> okay, back again over here. 1977 Olympic Skidoo. I've been a Skidoo guy my whole life. Always been as a child on the farm. Another barn find. I actually bought this one for my wife or she had something for the antique ride. Nice. And it's not real old, but it was really clean and it runs really good. Uh, I don't know, there's not really much story to it. It's just a nice snowmobile and it was really clean. Sure. Yeah. yeah, I remember these back in the day. These were nice. This and the motor ski version, the Nuvik. Correct, yeah. Very popular back in the day. My dad's friend had a Nuvik. I rode it a couple times. It was nice. Yeah, when I on, on the farm, we didn't have this model. We actually had the older Olympic, which would be like the 1970 series, you know, in the the bubble hood style. And that, yeah. that's soon to come. Sure, I have one. I do. Oh, have nice. One. Yep. Yeah. And uh, it's identical to what I grew up on our farm, the 1970 335 bubble hood. Yeah. In restoration now, so we'll see that one in the future. I'll look forward to that next year. Yep. Yes, sir. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. Yep. Thank you. The Country Riders Snowmobile Club and the Tatro family would like to thank the following sponsors. United Ag and Turf, your local John Deere dealership in Newport, Vermont. The Pick and Shovel, hardware, footwear, clothing, pets, ice cream, and so much more on Coventry Street in Newport, Vermont. The Junction Restaurant, find family dining on Route 101 in Troy, Vermont. 
Waltz Sales and Service, your dealer for Ski-Doo, Can-Am, and Sea-Doo in Derby, Vermont. South Bay Auto and Industrial Supply, your hometown Napa Auto Parts dealer in Newport, Vermont. Majestic Trophy, awards, engraving, and embroidery in Derby, Vermont. The Troy General Store, your one-stop shop in Troy, Vermont. And Juddy's Septic Service and Portable Toilet Rentals in Morgan, Vermont. Also, this video is made possible by Mike at the Vintage Snowmobile Podcast. I do a live podcast every Thursday at 9 p.m. Search for the Vintage Snowmobile Podcast on Facebook and YouTube to find episodes of the podcast. And I am your independent Amsoil dealer. Call or text me at the number on the screen for your free Amsoil catalog or ask me how to get the deepest discounts and free shipping on your next Amsoil order. Okay, if I get a shot of these trophies? Oh, yeah. Cool. All right, welcome everybody to the uh, Country Riders Thank Vintage you. Ride. Thank you for coming out this morning, this afternoon, and supporting us. Wish we had some uh, better snow conditions, but uh, it is what it is for today, and uh, looks like everybody's enjoying themselves and having a good time. So uh, that's that's great. Uh, thank you for being here. We're going to uh, announce the uh, winners. So uh, I'll start off with the uh, pre-1969 sleds are older. Third place is Dan Field, 1963. Dan. Third place for pre-1969. Oh, thank you. And if you if you want to just stand by for another minute, because you're going to have uh, second place for 1969, also Dan Field. So, thank you. He double double fisted two trophies here this morning. Good for you. Thank you for coming. Uh, first place, 1969 or older, Reggie Field. Hey, Reggie. Reggie Field. First place, 1969 or older. I don't see him. Does anybody see him? He's gone. Oh, okay. God bless him. Not bad. And he's still trucking. He's right. pretty little older. No, he moved a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, can, I can verify that. Still trucking. He moved that trailer. Let me let that be. Get that going. You don't want to go All right. All right. So we got uh, Reggie's. Reggie's on his way out. I'm gonna. I'm he's gonna, still eating. He's still eating. So I'm gonna continue on. So 1970 to 1974. Third place, Dean Stratton. Dean here. Reggie, you got first place for uh, 1969 or older. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Thanks for joining us today. So 1970 to 1974, third place is Dean Stratton. Thank you. Thank you very much. 1970 to 1974, second place, Andy Matten. And Andy's, uh, Andy's also one of our groomer operators for the club, so thank you, Andy. <laughs> Make snow too. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, 1970 to 1974 is Ray Peranto. Yo! Pretty lady right here. Thank you. All right. Next, next group is 1975 to 1979. Third place, Cam Tatro. I don't know who the judges are, but maybe that's a little fixed. <laughs> Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Cam. Thank you, little guy. 1975 to 1979, second place, Chip Dillon. Oh, what a nice flat. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, 1975 to uh, 1979. Number number one prize is Mark Bristol. Oh, there he is. First place, Mark Bristol, 1975-1979. Thank you. 
Thank you very much. All right, we got one more, one more group here. It's 1980 to 1994. Third place. Well, having difficulty reading the writing here. <laughs> Paul, Bella, Belfay, 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 Paul Belfay. Paul, you got uh, third place for 1980 to 1994. Oh, All right. Thank you, thank you, Paul. All right, 1980 to 1994. Second place, Larry Tatro. Larry. Thank you, Were you one of the judges, Larry? <laughs> Thank you. That was Larry, even Larry's uh, one of our uh, directors for the Sobo Thank you, Larry. Now, how about you take a picture quick? Talented reading here. It's not my last Tom Straw. 1980 to 1994, first place, Tom Straw. Tom, did I get that right, Tom? I'm having trouble with the, straight. With the right. Straight? straight? Okay. Tom Straight. Thank you. Thank you very much. And we've got a couple more. We got a People's Choice Award. <laughs> That's what it says. That's what it says. That's what it said on the slide. All right. Yeah. Well, they didn't have a name. They didn't have a name. This will be interesting. So, so we got the uh, People's Choice Awards. We got uh, three of them today. So number three for the uh, People's Choice Award is Panty Dropper. <laughs> there he is. There he is. Thank you. Third place gets out the first place in the names of it. All right. Number number two for the people's choice today is uh, Philip Shaddle. Hey, Phil. Philip is also uh, one of our directors for Country Riders. Thank you, Philip. <laughs> Thank you. All right. And uh, people's people's choice. The people of. Spoken in uh, number one today is Greg Starr. All right, Greg. All right. <laughs> Thank you, Greg. Congratulations. Congratulations. All that rubbing paid off. All the uh, co-owner. I, I was just told that all the first place anybody that got a first place today come come up here and uh, I guess there's an additional prize. That's correct. Okay, so anybody that got a first place. Come on up here. We'll get an additional you prize. And, right inside and I think we're going to get a picture of you guys, too, with first place winners. All right, 50-50. Everybody listen up. 50-50. $80, 50-50. Two glasses on. There's probably a name. Most people look yeah. in the back. Oh, well, let's see if there's a name. Steve-o. 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 Yeah. Steve-o. 50-50. Thank you. Yeah. Eighty bucks. Great. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Gave a little donation to the club. Thank you, Steve. Donated prizes, so he's going to pull four random names, and each as each person comes up, they can go in and pick something off the table. All right. So we got four more prizes to do here. What's the chance of this again, Steve-O? Steve-O! Mix that thing up. Take a try, Steve-O. And he's not cheating. He's not looking in the bucket either. Keith Griswold. Hey! All right. One more? Two more. One more? Two more. Two more. That's right. Gotta mix these things up. Keith Griswold again. Oh, no. Are you serious? Yeah. He's going inside. Don't keep picking up. Pick a different one. Dylan. Dylan Willie. Dylan Willie. You can only win one prize. 50 50 doesn't count. Dave D. Hey. Good. You get to go inside. Oh, yeah. Perfect. Good. Are you good? Thanks for coming today.
Here comes the party. says you can't relive the past. The Country Riders Snowmobile Club and the Tatro family would like to thank the following sponsors. United Ag and Turf, your local John Deere dealership in Newport, Vermont. The Pick and Shovel, hardware, footwear, clothing, pets, ice cream, and so much more on Coventry Street in Newport, Vermont. The Junction Restaurant, Find Family Dining on Route 101 in Troy, Vermont. Waltz Sales and Service, your dealer for Ski-Doo, Can-Am, and Sea-Doo in Derby, Vermont. South Bay Auto and Industrial Supply, your hometown Napa Auto Parts dealer in Newport, Vermont. Majestic Trophy, awards, engraving, and embroidery in Derby, Vermont. The Troy General Store, your one-stop shop in Troy, Vermont. And Juddy's Septic Service and Portable Toilet Rentals in Morgan, Vermont. Also, this video is made possible by Mike at the Vintage Snowmobile Podcast. I do a live podcast every Thursday at 9 p.m. Search for the Vintage Snowmobile Podcast on Facebook and YouTube to find episodes of the podcast. And I am your independent Amsoil dealer. Call or text me at the number on the screen for your free Amsoil catalog or ask me how to get the deepest discounts and free shipping on your next Amsoil order. Good evening and welcome to the podcast. I'm really glad you're here. We're going to do something a little different tonight. We're going to have an Amsoil Oilathon. Now, what is an oilathon? You might ask. <laughs> well, it's an opportunity for us to do some Q and A uh, and to learn about Amsoil products, especially as they pertain uh, to snowmobiles, modern and vintage. We're also going to talk a little bit about applications for cars, trucks, motorcycles, boats, things like that. But it's mostly going to be about snowmobiles. Now, before we get into all of that, I want to make sure that everything is working properly. So, if you can see my face and hear my voice, I'm going to ask you to leave a comment. Uh, let me know where you're viewing this from and whether you are a first-time viewer of the podcast or a regular viewer of the podcast. To our first-time viewers, we thank you so much for checking us out. Hope you have a good time with us tonight and hope you decide to circle back here in one week's time on either Sunday night or Thursday night at 9 p.m. Eastern time uh, for our podcast. We have something in this slot at 8 p.m. every Sunday night, and we also do a, a regular podcast every Thursday night. Hope you will join us for all of these things. To our regular viewers who are here week after week and season after season, thank you so very much. You you guys are the ones who make this possible, and we really, really appreciate that. Now, let's not uh, waste any more time here. Let's bring Rob on. Rob, how are you doing tonight? I think winter finally showed up. Finally. <laughs> Absolutely. In fact, to it's our viewers, I let it. I've seen green grass on my front lawn. Unreal, huh? it, It's been a crazy winter. Yeah, I'm glad you finally have some rideable snow over there. And to our viewers, too, if you finally have some rideable snow, please leave us a comment and let me know uh, where you are and how much snow you got. Um, 
Let's see, we've got a comment coming in. Oh, good. Our good friends, Stacy and Art Fosler from Platkill, New York. Regular viewers, they've been watching from the very beginning. And they said everything looks and sounds good. And Stacy and Art, did you get any snow there in Platkill, New York? Enough to do some riding on. Uh, love to hear from you. But um, yeah, well, we're waiting for some more comments. Um, uh, Rob here is a regular on the podcast. He's If you're a re regular viewer of these podcasts, Rob is no stranger to you. Uh, and also, it's also no secret, as you can tell by his shirt and his hat and the banner behind him, he is the Amazoil guy. Uh, and he's going to be uh, answering questions for us and explaining in great detail all of the different products that are available to us as snowmobilers, both vintage riders, modern uh, riders, and everything in between. Um, and before we get into that, we've got a couple of quick questions. Stacy and Art say no snow yet. Uh, George oh. Jackson says, been riding in Wisconsin for about a month. Wonderful. Well, I'm glad someone somewhere is getting some snow. <laughs> well, cool. So, Rob, if you're ready, I'm going to put you full screen. If you can uh, just kind of take us down the path and tell us about Amsoil. Okay. I've been involved with Amsoil for oh, 40 years. Back in 1979, I was racing a 79 SRX Yamaha. And a guy from New York State, Tim Bender, came up and said, you're having a lot of problems following plugs. I said, yeah, had a 15 to 1 oil mixture. Before I get out the starting line, I'm following a plug. He said, try AMS oil. He said, try it at 100 to 1. He said, 100 to 1, I'll blow my motor up. He says, no, I'm running my race machine at 300 to 1. You try it at 100 to 1, that's what it's warranty at, and you'll have more performance, more horsepower, and a longer engine life. So he, later that day, he gave me a tank of his fuel. I put it in the machine. First time I ever made it to the finals. It did make a difference in the performance, how much better the machine run, and the more horsepower I had. And at 101, I didn't follow any plugs. Now, this was a product right here that we were using at the time, Amsoil Saber Oil. One of these bottles, eight ounces to five gallons of gas. It's perfect for me at the cottage. It doesn't matter if it's a chainsaw, weedy, my 200 Black Max, a 50 Merc on the back of the pontoon boat, or the 99. Everything runs the same oil mixture with Amsoil, 101. They came out with this product in 1972, and all the oil manufacturers says, you're going to get sued, you're going to get sued. It's the same product we have in the market now. Outperforms them. Everything else out there in the market burns cleaner, gives you more horsepower and more performance. Then after that, snowmobiles started becoming popular. Amsoil came out first with our injector oil. Yes. And it can be used for snowmobile, boats, anything that's injector. You can also run it at a premix. And this is what we had for a number of years until Bombardier came out with uh, Exhaustus, the Rave Engine. And with the Rave Engine, we needed an oil that was a 92% no ash. Otherwise, the ash in the oil, ash was also a lubricant, the ash in the oil would plug up the exhaust valves, they would stop working, and you had less power out of the machine. The Rave Engine with the exhaust valves performed more, more performance out of it if you kept them clean. So Amsoil came out with the Interceptor. It is 98% no ash. So it's perfect for all the new machines out there now. You put it in the machine, you know it's an increase in horsepower, more performance, because of less friction, less drag. Amsoil is a slipperier type oil than the petroleum oils on the market. By cutting down friction and drag, you get more horsepower, more performance, and longer engine life. And that's the main thing you want out of your equipment. Longer engine life, more performance, and everybody likes more performance when out there in the machine. If Absolutely. you have two or three buddies all got the same machines, if all three of them have an 800 and the one guy's running Amsoil, you'll notice the one with the Amsoil, no smoke coming out of it, more performance, more horsepower, a little faster going down the lake than the other guys. Yeah. And the machines aren't cheap now. You can't no. buy a snowmobile for $10,000. Some of yeah. my friends are paying over 30000 for a snowmobile now. And you don't want to put a cheap quality oil in that high performance engine because it needs extra protection. So that's another one of our products to have. And the other snowmobile oil that we like mainly for racing application, I'll try it this way, Dominator. Dominator is not a 92% no ash oil. It will foul the valves. Um, I personally run it in my own machine because the interceptor will give you 5 to 6% increase in horsepower. This gives you almost 7. So it does give you a little bit more horsepower. But I've been stuck on a trail where it was washboard for six seven miles where the groomer hadn't gone down yet and before i got down that seven miles i just stopped and changed one of the valves one of those spark plugs because it did foul up um but it does give me more horsepower more performance and that's why i run it yeah but i should have been running the interceptor and that's what all my friends run in theirs yeah so amsoil has a complete line of products for all the applications for snowmobiles yes the four strokes we have the four strokes also zero w40 if you're out and it's 50 below zero, this pours up 58 below zero. 
It'll make it run cooler, more performance, more horsepower, just like all the other products. Yeah, so we have them all covered. Yeah. Um, my, last week we were talking about one of our other products, is chain case. A lot of the snowmobiles, people lift up the back end of the machine, they rev it up first thing in the morning because they think their rubber track is frozen in the snow. No, you're running a 75W90 gear lube in your chain case, and if it's 20 below, what do you think that gear oil is like? It's just like honey. That's what's making your belt burn first thing in the morning. If you put the AMSO chain case in it, it'll pour at 58 below zero. So the chain case won't be, the oil will not be in there thick. Have you ever seen somebody tear their chain case apart in the wintertime and they got to change the oil? At the races, I see it all the time. People's got to change the gears for the size of oval track they're going to be racing on. They have a spoon in there. They're scraping the oil out like it's honey. <laughs> the AMSO, they pour it out, it runs all over the place on them makes a big difference by having a lubricant that still flows in cold weather for protection. And in the wintertime, the only way that chain case oil will thin out and perform the way it's supposed to be is by the chain building up friction, heat, drag, which is wear and tear. You don't want that. You want a lubricant that will pour in the cold weather, give you more performance, more horsepower, just like all our other products do. And you change it once a year. Now, like... Amsoil has a lot of products for a lot of applications. And a lot of them we, we don't talk about because this is mainly a snowmobile show, but we have a complete line of antifreezes. Do you have a picture of the antifreeze there? You can pop I do. Up. Let me pop that on the screen. There we yes. go. Yes. 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 We use a different kind of antifreeze than the other companies do. And the reason I really like it because it's pet friendly. A lot of antifreeze, when it drips out, if an animal licks it, it's very toxic. Amsoil's not. A lot of antifreeze is only good for two years. I think Amsoil is eight. I have to double check on the stats, but I think it's seven or eight years it's good for. And the best thing I like about our antifreeze is it'll make it run cooler because it disperses the heat better. But then Amsoil came up with another product we can add to our antifreeze. Now it's a cooler boost, the one on the far right. It was designed for stock cars. The problem is with stock cars, they don't want antifreeze on the track. It's too hard to clean up, so they got to run straight water. Straight water will boil faster than antifreeze will. So people like to put a coolant boost in their water to make the stock car run cooler. Well, we found out in the wintertime, by putting that same cooler boost in our car, it cuts down on the time it takes for the car to warm up. And in our snowmobiles, when you're out there 40 below and you got to get over the car, you got to get the snowmobile warmed up. Some people like to jump back in their car to stay warm while the snowmobile's warming up. It will eliminate that problem because the cooler boost will make the snowmobile warm up faster. But when once it does get up to heat, the coolant boost disperses heat faster than antifreeze does, so it will run cooler. And a lot of people say a snowball never overheat. I've gone, I had to go down a lake seven miles where there's no snow on the middle of the lake, and people were overheating them when it was 20 below on the bare ice because we didn't have kickers, and the snow wasn't being kicked up in the heat exchange, and the machines were overheating, except for mine with the coolant boost. It made that nice. much difference in machine run cooler. One of the machines with us, a Yamaha, we had to stop and kick the track because the sliders heated up so much the track wouldn't turn anymore. So this guy went and looked for open water to keep hitting to cool the engine down. Wow. <laughs> Things people will do to keep their motors running. Yeah, by, for sure. By adding something like a coolant boost, this will help make the engine run cooler and it also makes the engine heat up faster. Yeah, it's a great additive. I use it in my pickup trucks, my little car, and my snowmobiles. Nice. Anything liquid cool, that's it's a nice additive. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Sure. And when you're out snowmobiling, you're not out snowmobiling when it's 10 above. You're out there when it's 20 below or 10 below. And it does get cold. And by having a product that will warm up faster, especially a lot of times you stop and you go into a restaurant and you come back out, it doesn't take long for that snowmobile to cool back down. you got to sit there and let it warm up. And a lot of them have a rod and a heat exchanger on it. So once the thermostat opens up once, we got some people that still smoke cigarettes. And the rule is it's a two cigarette before he can take off on a snowmobile. It takes that long to warm it up. Because <laughs> <laughs> if you don't, you can cold season when sure. it's really cold out. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Now, we um, before we shift gears, uh, I want to back up a little bit to the Dominator product. A mutual friend of ours a little while back uh, did a testimonial for us. Um, and I know we've already seen it, but it's just a couple of minutes. I'd like to play it again. Uh, this is our mutual friend, Midge Rosebrook. He's the founder of the Eastern Snowmobile Racing Hall of Fame. And he made this video. It's a quick video. Let's take a look. This is for our uh, friend, uh, Rob Hilditch, the Amsoil guy. 
uh, see what I have here, Rob. And uh, I think you have a photo of my sled uh, last year at Pittsburgh. Mike, you can probably yes. pop that up. I, uh, I've got this uh, 1975 uh, Polaris clone PDC. It started out as a 77 TX 440. And I uh, had Mark Melanger do the job. And Mike has got a photo of it, I believe, somewhere. And you can pop it on. And there's a photo of me sitting on that sled uh, getting ready to head out in the Pittsburgh ride up up north in Pittsburgh, New Hampshire this last March. It was 35, 40 degrees. We had eight inches of wet, heavy snow. It snowed all day. And I was trying to break in this new engine. It was probably the worst uh, conditions of trying to break in an engine is to take off on a 30 mile run uh, at 50, 60 miles an hour because that's the speed these guys were going up there. Uh, to, to break in this new engine, but it ran perfect all day long, and I and I believe a lot of it is probably due to this racing AMS oil that I use. It's uh, you only use like uh, I think I did a little more than 50 to one. It says 50 to one here, but I think I did more like 40 to one to break in the engine. And so anyway, just a shout out to Rob that uh, that I'm using it as well, and. Uh, there you have it and uh <laughs> happy trails when we get snow yes and if you're curious about buying some amazon i'll just click the link in the description and uh in doing so with with my dealer number you're helping to support the podcast and i thank you so much in advance for doing that and thank all of the people who have been doing that that helps to support the podcast yeah and thank you that yeah. helps to support right, the podcast you're doing this yeah uh, i thought this would make rob smile oh for sure <laughs> thank you yeah so what do you think? Did that make Rob smile? I like seeing good testimonies like that. Good, good deal. So, what are your thoughts on that? Where someone's you know done a restoration or something, and they're they're breaking in a new engine? Uh, what what are your thoughts on that as far as do's and don'ts and, and things like that? Best thing to do is use the best oil you can get your hands on for those applications. Yeah, he I bet he doesn't have a thousand dollar motor in that thing. He's probably got <laughs> it's probably nickel plated cylinders in that. Yes, it's probably a replica of the actual race engine. So yeah. it's it's not a cheap motor. So the, the best thing to do is use the best oil you can. Yeah. And you know what? All the big racetracks, if you go on the Eagle River racetrack site, you can look up the rules and regulations, and they tell you you can only use three different kinds of fuel, and there's only two different kinds of oil you can use, Bombardier and Amsoil. Really? So everybody at that track either is running Bombardier or Amsoil. It's the only two that, that that's approved for the track. Wow. Yeah. That's cool. That says something. That's an endorsement in itself, isn't it? Yes, yes, yeah, sure. and it's right on their website. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, and I did snowcross for 14 years. And when I first year I went to snowcross, people brought five or six snowmobiles with them because they blew the motors up. Second year after me at, being at snowcross, people would go a whole season on the same motor. They wouldn't blow engines up anymore. It made that much of a difference, AMS on the engines. That's amazing. Yeah. Very cool. Very cool. Now, the nice thing, too, is not only are there, there the motor oils that we've talked about for either injections or premix or anything like that. Um, we're going to pop a, a graphic on the screen. We also have some other items at Amsoil uh, that are useful to snowmobile owners. Uh, yeah. You want to talk yeah some of these it's got a lot of different spray cans. Fogging oil. A lot of people like to fog their engines before they put them away at the end, end of the year. The mud slinger. Um, a lot of it for the dirt bike people. Um, when they're racing dirt bikes, if they don't have the mud slinger on and it's a muddy track, that dirt bike can come in weighing 50 pounds heavier after 20 laps than what it was before. And the chain lube for the chains for the dirt bikes. Silicone spray. Uh, we had a problem two weeks ago with the wife's car. Uh, uh, couldn't get the passenger door open because the rubbers were froze. You wouldn't think a rubber would freeze on a car, but we end up getting the silicone spray out, spraying it, and haven't had a problem since. A metal detector, it's a big seller for me for opening new accounts. If I go to a trucking company or something like that, they have their favorite oil. Or the best thing I like to do is when I, when I go to a farm tractor, a John Deere guy. John Deere guy will not buy any else except for John Deere. But if I go approach him with a product like our MP and say, do you ever have a bolt seed you can't get out or something like that or something squeaking? or uh, a shaft on your hydraulic that's got rust marks on it and it's wearing the seals out. I said, here, try our metal detector. And by getting them to try that, the farmer will phone me up and said, well, I've never seen a metal detector work as good as that. If it works that good, how good your oil? 
But if I were to approach the John Deere guy about using the AMSO to start with, he won't use any except for John Deere oil. So it's a good introduction product. Now the heavy duty MP, I happen to have a can right here. Oh good, yeah. It's a 15 ounce can. It's a good size can. And I'm doing a test this week on my car. I got really aggressive snow tires on my car. On one side of the car, I'm spreading the wheel wells with this. The other side, I'm not. Because last week, when we got really cold, there was so much ice and snow under there, the wheel wouldn't turn. I had to go up with a hammer and break that frozen snow off. So I'm going to spray under there with this here, because I also use them on the snow shovels. Today, we had a really wet snow. So after spraying the shovel with this, lift the shovel up, and the snow just falls off. It didn't stick. So I'm, a lot of my customers use it in their snow blowers. Because uh, with the wet snow, they got to get a stick out and stick down the auger to get it cleaned out. By having a spray in there, that wet snow won't stick. It vents, vents that problem from happening. Um, two of my snow plow companies use it on the front of the plows. I didn't think snow would stick on a plow. But when it's wet, packy snow, it sticks. Sometimes the front end loaded, they go to dump it and it still has a half a load sitting there. Until they hit it two or three times. By putting the NP in it, they lift it up and it falls right out. So it's and i got one guy he wants it he's going to just try to use it for an undercoater he's going to spray his hole underneath his vehicle he's used it for a number of years and he's tired of some of these products people are using right now for undercoating and he wants to try the amzo mp so it'd be interesting how he finds how well it works by the end of the year but it's a multi-purpose product 101 yeah. uses you can use it for that's amazing that's amazing now we have some comments coming in uh let's see here uh, this goes back to when we were talking about the price of uh, snowmobiles. It's hard to find something under $10,000. So John Lass is confirming that, saying you can't buy a cheap old machine anymore. That's certainly true. No. And Everybody then, uh, thinks their old machines are worth big bucks. <laughs> yeah. 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 I get a couple old jigs if somebody wants some. <laughs> sure. <Yeah. laughs> and then uh, Ann Packer says this week we're going to get some snow. So good. Maybe they can finally get some riding in. Yeah. Now, one of the things we haven't talked about yet is the pricing and um one of the things i always say is you know the best is never cheap um but uh also when you compare other factors mzo can in many cases be the the economical choice not only the best quality choice but the most economical choice and, I'll, and I, that leads me to a comment that, we, that just came in and i'll let you speak to all of this but mike skidmore is saying he just paid 31 dollars per gallon for lucas snowmobile oil and that's what he played for paid for uh, clots oil in 2014. Um, do you want to speak to that or just the, the economics or the, the value angle of, of uh, AMSOIL? We, we have some companies up here selling injector oil for 21 bucks a gallon. It's a recycle company we have up here. If you have a new machine, you definitely don't want to put that quality oil in your vehicle. But AMSOIL is cheaper than the manufacturers. If you went to a Bombardier shop and asked them how much their gallon of oil is, um, Bombardier sells theirs for about $69 a gallon. Amzo, we sell ours for, let's see, the Interceptor, $57 a gallon, one at a time. If you buy a case of it, two, two twenty seven. dollars Now, later on, Mike and I will talk about the preferred account. Preferred, you buy directly from Amzo. Instead of paying two twenty seven, dollars you pay one sixty six. That brings it down to like $44 a jug. Yeah. So that's only $10 more than when he paid for that Lucas. But look at the quality difference you're getting in the product. More performance, more horsepower, longer engine life. Yeah, you're getting the best available oil at a very reasonable price. Yeah, yeah. And if you have the older type machine where you don't need the interceptor and you don't have a race engine in it, so you don't need the dominator, you just need the injector oil. Our injector oil is $188 for a case, and your preferred price is $130.39. That brings it down to less than $34 a bottle. Yeah, that's so you're that's still nice. getting a good quality product, but. Yeah, we, we're comparable to the other products out there that are performance products. Yeah. But we're cheaper than what the manufacturers are. Nice. So it's a very strong value proposal there. Yep. Yeah. So I guess that's a good segue now into the preferred customer program. I'm going to pop a graphic on the screen. And I think in the past you've told me that uh, it's very similar to a Costco membership where it's a one-time $10 fee, but that fee gives you instant access to the deepest possible discounts that Amazon has to offer, as well as some other things. In fact, I'm going to pop that on the screen. Yeah, why buy directly from a retailer that's carrying the product? You can buy directly from Amazon. You can get a preferred account. They have an introduction fee for $10. You get a six-month membership to see if it's cost-efficient for you. And most people find it really is cost-efficient because you can save almost $50 on a case of gallons. 
And most people, no one snows by, snowmobiles by themselves. So they usually tell their buddies, hey, I'm going to order a case, you want one too? So they save $100 on two cases. But by being a preferred customer, you save almost 25% on all the products you order. You don't have to order a full case. You can mix and match. And if you order $100 worth, you get free shipping. So say you wanted a, case, a couple of bottles of Domineer oil and some interceptor. You can mix and match the case. You get a total of $100. They ship it to you free. On your birthday, they send you a $5. You get a $5 coupon. Every time you order $100 worth, you get a $5 coupon. So if you ordered um, $600 worth during the year, that would pay for your $30 membership the following year. So your membership would be free for you by ordering that much product. Yeah, that's an amazing It doesn't value. take all that long to order that much product. No. So what was it? Uh, the, the, the Interceptor, uh, $166 for a case. Sure, sure. And and if at this point you're thinking about taking advantage of that, the way the best way to do it is look in the description for a link uh, to the preferred customer program. Click on that link, and it's just a few clicks to get yourself set up on that preferred customer program. And then you can go shop on the website. And since you've clicked the boxes for the preferred customer program, anything you order now is going to give you uh, that deepest level of discount that's available to you now as a preferred customer. So now you, you select your items and you make your order and you're probably going to save more than your $10 investment right on that first order. Yes. So you get your savings right away. It's an incredible value. Yeah. Um, so, and, and, and also the other thing too, is in clicking that link, you're signing up under Rob and I, and in the interest of full disclosure, I'm signed up as an Amsoil dealer under Rob. So when you order through me using that link in the description and using my dealer number there, uh, Rob and I both benefit. And if you enjoy these podcasts that you see us on every week, it's a wonderful way to support that because Rob and I both make a commission uh, whenever you order. It doesn't cost you anything extra. It's just a commission we, we get as being set up as dealers. And the commissions that I make go directly toward offsetting the cost of doing these podcasts. So it's a wonderful way to support the podcast. And, you know, it's a way I'd like to thank people for doing that uh, because it does. It's not cheap to do these podcasts. I'm happy to do them, but it costs money. And the, off the MZOIL commissions help to offset that. And uh, one other thing, we've got a promotion that's on currently. I'll pop the graphic on the screen if you want to talk this up, Rob. If anybody's ordering other products, like say you got a diesel truck or a car or something, you're ordering some other products, and you add two bottles of Amsoil 2 Cycle to that oil order, they're going to throw in a free hat for you. Nice. And you just got to use the promotion code CCO123ATS, and it's good till January 31st. Yeah, so there's a couple more days to act on that. Yeah. And there's a certain part of the order, the order process, where it will ask you for the the dealer number of the person who you refer, who has referred you. Uh, and you'll see my number there on the screen, 304-55594. I'll ask you to please enter that number. That way Rob and I will both get credit for it. And, and we do thank you so much in advance for doing that. Yeah, yeah. And a lot of people send me an email and said, well, what is the price of something? If you click on the, the bottom of Mike's thing, there's a thing on there where you can click and you can get a free catalog from Amazon. Yes. And inside the catalog where you open it up is the two cycle oils. And it tells you what the retail price is and what the preferred price is. And it tells you one bottle or one case. So you know ahead of time exactly what you're paying for all the Amazon products. Yeah, for sure. And speaking of Amazon products, look at this wide range of products that Amazon has to offer. Um, all of these products are in that catalog and it gives you a chance to sit there at your leisure and flip through the catalog and see what, if anything, in there is right for you. Yes, yes. Amsoil has a complete line of products for everything, right from gas engines to um, diesel engines, uh, forklifts, compressor oils, automatic transmission fluid. One product that's not on that picture, Mike, one of my favorites, is the Amsoil 75W90 gear loop. There we go. Have you ever tried to change the oil in the rear end of the car at home? I know the shops all have pumps and all that, but if you're doing this at home and you have a regular ball like this and you're trying to fill up a rear end, you don't have any room to tilt that any higher than that. This bottle, you put it up, you squeeze it, and 100% of the fluid comes out of this bottle. What nice. a neat idea for filling rear ends, transfer cases, automatic transmissions, stuff like that. And all our uh, products like that come in that. I wish our two cycle would come in it too, but it's, got, it's more money for that style bottle than it is for the regular. Sure. That's a really innovative approach to that for those awkward yes. angles like that. Yes. Yes. At the next car show we got, we got a rear end sitting there and we got 10 of those bottles with water in it. 
and people are going to try and realize how easy it is to fill something like that instead of using the old-fashioned bottle trying to tip it and fill it in. Yeah. Yeah, I imagine there's a whole lot of profanity involved trying to do that. Oh, you waste so <laughs> You're making much. a mess. And, yeah. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Yeah. And for some, sure. Of, some, of the, some of the big four-wheel drives, the 3500s, they, they will take four bottles of that stuff. So you have to buy five to get four in because you waste it so much. With the Amso, 100% of the stuff all the bottle goes in. Goes, it all goes in, yeah. You yeah. get the right angle, you stuff, stuff that little nozzle right in there and just squeeze the bag until it's empty. Yeah. 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 If, if you spill anything, it's one or two drops. Yeah. As opposed to ounces of it. Yeah. <laughs> For sure. That, that, that creates an extra value as well. Yeah. Yeah. And since yeah. we're talking about the automotive product, Amsoil's 5W30, 20W30, all the engine oils that Amsoil has is warranted for 25,000 miles in one year. Most people change their oil at three or 5,000 miles. And the reason they do that is because the petroleum oils, they oxidize. They form carbons, gums, sludges, varnish. They don't wear out. They get contaminated. That's why you got to change the oil at regular intervals. Synthetic oil, it was designed by a guy that was a jet aircraft pilot. And one day when he went to work, he asked his boss at work, why does my jet start when it's 40 below zero and my car won't? He says, it's the synthetic oil. So once he found that out, he started investigating and designing the oil for the automobile industry. And when he first got, he was, we were the first oil to be AI approved back in 1972. Mobile One, them couldn't pass the test. None of the other products could pass the test. And all the other oil companies still were changing the oils at 3,000 miles. And Amsoil, when they first came out in the market, they said 25,000 miles in one year. Castro and everybody else phoned our president up and said, you guys are going to be sued. Why are you doing that? And he said, well, we tested our oil and we can go further than that. Well, wow. so Amsoil, since 1972, has been promoting 25,000 miles or one year oil changes. And people are amazed when they pull my stick out of my truck. And the oil is so clean inside because it doesn't form any carbons, gums, or sludges. And by putting a synthetic oil in the car, it's the same benefit as the snowball oil. Cuts down friction and drag. Less friction, less drag. The oil runs cooler. For every 10 degrees you drop your oil temperature, doubles the life. Wow. And for every friction and drag you cut down in the engine, gives you better gas mileage. So you're going to get longer oil changes, better gas mileage, less friction, less drag, engines that last longer and you're going to get more performance out of the car and the average truck you don't buy a new truck now for under seventy thousand dollars yeah big so money a lot of people at a hundred thousand two hundred thousand are looking and trading their trucks mine's in kilometers so mine's a hundred and a million and three hundred thousand kilometers with eight hundred thousand miles i think that is and it still <laughs> runs like a charm now wow. the carpet wore out the seat's got a spring sticking out of it but the more it's a six liter and they're wow. not popular for lasting very long and it still runs like a charm that's amazing. That's from running Amsoil all these years. Yes. Yes. I bought the truck on a Wednesday. I had to run to Montreal back. The next morning, I went in the dealership and said, dump the oil. I said, you just got a truck yesterday. I said, yeah, I got a thousand miles on it. So we took an oil sample. And when the oil sample came back, the oil was contaminated with silicone, they say. And silicone is sand. Well, the engines are sandblasted. That's why I tell everybody with a new vehicle, change your first oil change soon. Because there's a lot of contaminated, a lot of big metal particles in your first break-in of the oil. Yeah. So I recommend that people change your oil early on your first oil change. Flush that out. Go quick. twice as long, and then third, when you put the Amsoil in, don't worry about it. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Nice. Well, cool. So we're unless you had any more on that, and if you do, by all means, keep going. But unless you had any more on that, I was going to switch gears. Did Did you have any more before we change gears? Or? While we're talking about the engine oils and the new gear loop bottle we just showed you, I do a lot with highway trucks. Um, some of these trucks take 48 quarts of oil. And when you're trying to t sell them a $15 quart of oil, you got to prove to them they're going to save money. Now, a lot of these guys are going 10,000 kilometers right now between oil changes. And with the Amzo, we do an oil analysis for them. And when the oil analysis comes back, it says, continue, don't change the oil yet. And some of them are going five times longer between the oil changes. Some of these guys are changing oil once a month. By switching over the Amzo, they're doing it every half year. And I have a lot of customers that do steady runs, that do the same kind of run, and they know exactly how much gas. They're burning $1,000 worth of gas with diesel fuel a week. If they got a 10% increase in fuel economy, that's 100 bucks a week they're saving in their pocket by switching. Yeah, off. that's significant savings, yeah. Yeah, yeah. One of my customers was delivering home fuel. Now, they got their oils free for their truck. 
and they came and bought Amsoil off me because one one Christmas day at 10 below, the trucks wouldn't start and somebody needed home fuel. He said, yeah. by having the Amsoil in it, it starts right up. And they got an average. They're the ones that got the average of 10% increase in fuel economy. So it was cheaper for them to run Amsoil and buy it off me than to put their their comp brand of company oil in. Plus, they were spending every, one Saturday a month changing the four trucks. Once they switched over to Amsoil, they didn't have to do that. Yeah. So it saved them money, and they made more money by running the Amsoil. It was cheaper for them. Sure. Yeah. Now, would you say it's, it's a good idea to do periodic uh, oil analysis of, on your vehicles just to kind of see what's going on with your engine. What what, what will that tell you if, if you're doing that? And, and how useful is that as far, as far as selecting oils or deciding when to change your oil? Or, One or of my other thoughts are a customer that was running from Canada down to Mexico, get parts, bring back and forth. And they switched over to Amsoil at 50,000 miles on their highway truck. Now at 70,000, they did an oil sample and they said oil sample is a little more resample at 90. So they resampled at 90 and they told them to take their engine in and get their can replaced. So this guy took his truck into the dealership, it was still under warranty, said, I want the can replaced. Oil now says it's starting to wear out and it's low number such and such. So I phoned the oil company and I said, how do you know it's low such and such? He said, we know what model engine is. We've had that engine happen about 200 times already. So we know exactly what it is and why it's causing the problem. Eh? And the dealership says, no, nah, we checked it, nothing wrong with it. The guy says, well, I'm a paying customer. I'll pay the $600 to have the cam changed. They took the cam out, and the exact lobe that the oil analyst said was where it was where it. Now, if that would have broke on him in Mexico, instead of being $600, it would have been $6,000 to get the truck repaired. He says most of the time he tows the trucks back home to get them fixed because it's so expensive down there to fix them. But yeah. by doing no analysis, that prevented uh, a problem from happening. Yeah. So it's a wonderful preventative measure to, to do regular oil analysis. Especially if you've got a vehicle taking 48 quarts of oil instead of dumping it. And to prove yeah. to a customer that the AMSO will last longer, that's what we do with some of the vehicles. Yeah. yeah. But the average person with the car, they don't find it's necessary to do. Sure. You know, most people can pull the dipstick out, put wipe the dipstick with a Kleenex, look up at the sun. And if there's metal particles in there, it, you'll see the, the flicker off the metal. You don't see any of that with AMSO. Nice. Yeah, yeah. And if the person knows anything about oil, they know when they were changing their other oil, how black and thick it was. Mm. And uh, I took my car in the truck one time. The guy says, why are you changing the oil? It's brand new. I said, no, I have uh, 30,000 miles on that oil. Wow. That's why I'm changing it. Wow. Says, oh, no way. It doesn't have that much miles on it. Yeah. That's impressive. I have all my friends come. Can I get your used oil? My car uses oil. Can I have your used oil? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, the gift that keeps on giving, right? Yes, yes. <laughs> and when we're talking about the gear lube, how the gear lube, uh, um, most people don't realize the uh, 80W90, how thick it would get. Mm -hmm. And I get a lot of highway trucks to get a better fuel economy by changing the gear lube. Amsoil's gear lube has a 500,000 mile extended warranty on the oil. Most most highway trucks are changing every 50,000 miles. Mm -hmm. Amsoil's 500,000 miles with their gear lube. That's amazing. Yeah, so it's a big savings for a highway truck. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Over time, that you really save a lot of money. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's impressive. Well, cool. So in a moment, we're going to talk about the business opportunity at Amsoil, but I'm going to transition into that with, with a quick announcement. Um, and that is this. A little while back, I got this award from Amsoil. I'm going to try to get it. Where I, here we go. Now, this is a bronze cup for a sales achievement. Um, and it's nice that they recognize me for that and everything. I really appreciate that. But the real thanks goes to the viewers who have been purchasing Amsoil using my dealer number. I really, really appreciate that. And uh, as I've said before, when you purchase Amsoil using my dealer number, it helps to offset the cost of doing these podcasts. And Rob and I are doing Amsoil together. I'm signed up under Rob. So when you order through me, Rob and I both benefit. If you enjoy seeing our smiling faces every week uh, and, and feel that, that that's something that's enjoyable to you and you want to help support that, buying Amsoil with us is a wonderful way to do that. And there are links uh, to do that in the description uh, to, to get started with the Amsoil Preferred Customer Program, also to order a free catalog. Um, those are great ways to get started. Um, and did you have anything more, Rob, before we transition into Amsoil as a business opportunity? I forgot to mention one thing about the two-cycle oil, hmm? the interceptor. I don't know if you can see the sign behind me, but I'm going to grab them. You see that in the screen, Mike? Yes. Okay, it's called Run on Freedom. Amsoil came out with this program to recognize a manufacturer can't tell you, Bombardier can't sell you, tell you, you got to run Bombardier oil, you don't have a warranty. 
If they do that, they have to give you oil free. It's a modest act down in the States, it's called or something. So Angelo came up with this plan to let people know that a manufacturer can't say you got to run the oil. So Angelo, if you buy a brand new snowmobile, they'll give you a one year warranty. If you buy a brand new snowmobile and you put Angelo in the machine and you fill out this card, you can get a two year warranty from Angelo. So if anything happens to your snowmobile the second year, Angelo is going to cover it because they believe their oil is so much better than all the other ones on the market. And that's a great marketing plan for us. Yeah, the other for sure. manufacturers aren't happy with it. They're trying to say, you can't warranty our machines. Well, we know our oil is better than your oil you're selling, and we're going to prove it to you. By, and they, even if the person's machine's one year old and they start switching AMSO, we'll still give them one more year warranty. That's amazing. Yep. That's, that's what they call putting your money where your mouth is, the yes. proof in the pudding, so to speak. Yep. Very cool. Very cool. So, yeah, unless there's anything else, did you want to, uh, shall we transition to the business opportunity? Or? Okay. Okay, let's transfer over. Sure. So, yeah, as, as we're saying, you know, I'm signed up under Rob as a dealer. Uh, and if you sign up under me, Rob and I are both available to you for coaching and support. Um, and each of us brings a significant amount to the table of value to you as someone signing up for Amsoil. And I'll give you an example. Rob's been doing Amsoil for over 40 years. He knows all of the products in ins and outs. He knows all of the different uh, business models that you can do with Amsoil. And the one thing that he's especially strong at is selling Amsoil at events. Uh, you think of car shows, cruise nights, uh, snowmobile shows, boat shows, any sort of event or race or something. Rob is really good at selling Amsoil at those events. Um, and so Rob is available. If you're curious about that, if you enjoy going to those types of events and races and things and thinking about uh, trying to monetize that selling Amsoil, Rob is the guy to coach you with that. And when you signed up under me, you get Rob and I. What I bring to the table is I do a lot with social media and uh, I can help coach you on how to generate Amsoil leads on social media. I also have places that you can post to right now. Uh, so you don't have to reinvent the wheel, creating your own pages, social media pages and things. I'm not saying it's a bad idea to do that. It's a very good idea to do that. But I've got places you can start posting right away. And if you let's say you create a new page, it's a way it's a place to promote that page. And I've got a lot of little details, ins and outs on how to get on the right side of the, the Facebook algorithm. Uh, if you're thinking about doing a YouTube channel or a podcast, I can help you with that because I've been doing this. Um, a lot of things Rob and I both bring to the table that is uniquely available to you. Uh, that it's not available from other Amsoil dealers. And that's not to knock other Amsoil dealers, but Rob and I bring something very unique to the table if you're thinking about joining Amsoil as a dealer. Um, anything to add to that, Rob? I have dealers from California, Florida, BC, all over that I help. So with email, it's really easy to help dealers. We're available 24 hours a day. Yeah, you don't have to live right in my own town for me to help you. Yeah. It's true. With, with a phone and email and so forth, it's very easy to be in contact and give coaching and support. And yeah. And in a moment, I'm going to show a clip of Rob at a, at a, at a vintage snowmobile event. Or I don't know if it's modern or vintage, but a snowmobile event. And you'll see the setup he's got. It's a very impressive setup. Um, now, the nice thing is, is this is what's possible, but you don't have to start at that level. You can start as simple as walking around like you see Rob here with an Amsoil hat and a shirt. Uh, and do you want to talk us through that about, you know, people will approach you? Uh, when they see you wearing that yes and ask the, you clothing, what the clothing pays off so much uh, i could be in a grocery store and a person comes up and says do you know somebody that sells amsoil because <laughs> yeah. i'm wearing the clothing and i have the logos on my vehicle and i come out of a parking lot and there's somebody standing beside my car and i'm thinking did they hit my car or something what are they doing <laughs> person said i've been waiting 10 minutes for you to come out i don't know where to buy amsoil that's the biggest problem with amsoil people don't know where to buy it so by sure. seeing my clothing or my logo or something somewhere that's they're waiting to find out where they can buy it from. And yeah. that's when I set them up as a preferred account. And that's a modest investment too for a dealer, you know, to, to get a hat and a shirt, maybe a couple of magnets for your vehicle. That, that you probably do all of that for under $100. And, and now you've got a people approaching you. And if you sign up under Rob and I, Rob is going to coach you on how, what to say to these people when they approach you, how to, how to use that, to take that conversation to the place of turning into a solid lead or possibly even a sale. And becoming a regular customer for you uh and it's a it's a, just a wonderful thing it's just a, a great way to start this amsoil business is, is is to get a hat and a shirt and a magnet for your car and just let let it come to you and as you get going then you can you know do do like what rob is doing at these shows in fact let me pop that video on the screen we're going to see rob uh, and this he's talking with a, a mutual friend of ours this is gary porter he does oh, the yeah. uh, snowmobile sessions uh uh a podcast which is a wonderful podcast there's a link to it in the description if you like snowmobiles at all please visit our mutual friend gary porter he does a wonderful podcast he let's a take a look at he sure does yeah 
yeah, he's he's a great guy. Uh, but yeah, let's take a look at, at Rob and Gary hanging out at a, at a at a show. Let's take a look. No mobile sessions live. Enjoy the ride. It's a journey for life, and I'm your ride. Hang on. We got Rob the oil guy. He's, we we say hi to Rob the oil guy. Rob the oil guy, how are, are you? Are we, Good. Are we live today? No, you're not live. It's pre-recorded. Oh, I Memrex. Get, I can't get yeah, it's Memrex. <laughs> I can't get live to work. How's the show been, bud? You know what? This afternoon we were swamped. It was stupid how many people was here. Yeah. Some people have been out in their bicycles or skateboards or something today. <laughs> it was packed. But it's supper time, so it's calmed down and we get a chance to have something to eat ourselves. That's great. That's mm. great. What do you? Uh, what's been the hot seller for you at, at uh, this year's event? Oh, the Interceptor is always one of the biggest sellers. It's the trail riding machine. Uh, gives you more horsepower, more performance, longer range of life. So that's what everybody wants. And it's cheaper than buying factory oil. And that's, it outperforms them. That's great. But some of the young kids, they still think they need the racing oil. It's mainly, <laughs> the for, racing, mainly for racing applications. The Interceptor is 98% no ash. So with the exhaust valves and all that, you have no problem. But the Dominator is only 91. So it will dirty up your valves if you hit a bumpy trail. Right. Wow. So if you want to change your plugs, you can run it. Yeah. Dominator, but <laughs> but it's a race oil, right? mainly for racing yeah, applications. That's cool. And you hooked me up with some 100 to one premix, which is awesome. Yeah. The Saber, I just like the name Saber. One of these little bottles for five gallons of gas yeah. will give you more protection than what the other brands. Still, I won't mention it. Yeah. At 32 to one, this gives you more protection. Exactly. I'm going to be running that in the uh, Mercury Force this su next summer, and uh, I maybe I will be running my leaf blower in the fall for sure because I want to test that too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So. <laughs> Got to should be good. Option, don't yeah, you? yeah, I do too. That's right. There so, you go. okay, we will be in touch with that. Thank you for your time, Rob, the oil guy. Need an extra one. I need an extra one. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> I don't drink it. Well, maybe I'll start. Hey, hey, you got here, bones? What's that? Here, I'm going to come back and grab it. Okay, I'm just going to take a walk. I'll be back to grab that. Thanks, guys. Yeah, the good times at the uh, at the snowmobile show. Yes. Yes. Yeah. But uh, but that's the thing is, you know, Rob has been doing this, as you can imagine, for quite a few years. And it's taken a while to build up where you can have that big uh, kiosk and display there. Um, so I guess the point I'm trying to make is if as a new Amsoil dealer, you don't have to start out at that level. You can start off, like we said, you know, wearing a, a hat and a shirt uh, and, and getting some conversations going. But over time, if you find that it's working for you, you can maybe start with a small display. And as that grows, uh, get a slightly larger display. And over time, you can get to the point where you've got a display like Rob has got there. Yeah. Um, yeah. And Rob wouldn't... The time, I only have a 10 by 10 booth. Wow. But that there show, we had 12 dealers working at it. Really? Wow. Nice. Nice. And, and you wouldn't do all of that if it wasn't profitable, you know, to set up a, a display like that and do all of that. So it's it's very much yeah. worth your while to do that. Yeah. And, um, and, and a lot of yeah. times when we go to some shows, I just open a tailgate and I just have products sitting on the back of the tailgate with a flag up. And I go around and see the show myself and then I sit there in a lawn chair. So... And a lot of times, some of the shows only charge me five bucks to come, like on a cruise night or yeah. a vintage snowball show. Yeah, they'll say they'll say give us some prizes. You can set up a free booth. Yeah, that's cool. So even that's just cool. you know, with, with some items on a tailgate and a flag, an Amsoil flag, people will approach you and ask you about Amsoil, and it's an opportunity for you to have that conversation to uh, to to try to sell some Amsoil or sign them up as a. I make a sure I park right beside my buddies that are already all using Amsoil already. Nice, <laughs> and they all have the Amsoil decals on their vintage machines. Sure. So when their friends come over, they send the guy over and say, "This is where we get our Amsoil from." <laughs> nice. Yeah. So that's you know, and, and if anyone who's thinking about that, and if you if you enjoy uh, car shows, boat shows, anything like that, snowmobile shows, like Rob and I do, it's a wonderful way to monetize that. And just imagine pulling up, putting down the the tailgate of your pickup, having a few Amsoil items on there, maybe an Amsoil banner flying. Um, yeah. it's a very modest investment and Rob can coach you on how to do that and how to handle those conversations as people approach you, how to turn those conversations into something that's productive for everyone. Um, so that, that's what Rob is, is available to you for. And as I said, I do a lot with social media and I've got numerous Facebook groups that have thousands and thousands of, of followers and you can post in there. I can show you how to post, what to post, the frequency, all of the, there, there are guidelines to do this. I'm not saying just do whatever you want in there. But I can show you the exact guidelines of the, how to do it, how not to do it, so you're not on the wrong side of the Facebook algorithm, and so that you're on the, the right side of the, the viewers of the of the the group. 
uh, to get maximum effect and, and to get to generate yourself some catalog requests or uh, inquiries about AMSOIL. I'll show you exactly how to do it. Um, and you don't, it, I encourage you to create your own Facebook page, but then I can show you how to leverage that into what I was just talking about. But you can start this without a Facebook page or any presence on Facebook other than your own personal profile. And I'll coach you through how to at least get started putting your stuff in front of my audience and then show you how to build an audience of your own and how to work that as well. And if you want to get into doing video like we're doing now, I can help you with that. I do a lot with social media uh, and I have muscle car groups, exotic car groups. Uh, and I've also got one called Wheels, Keels and Snowmobiles where anything with a, with a motor, anything with a gas motor is fair game. Yeah. And that's got like 15,000 fans. So you can be posting in there right away. And, I'll, and like I say, you can't just do whatever you want in there. I'll, I'll give you the guidelines, but the guidelines are to help you to, so that you're not um, getting on the wrong side of the audience or the wrong side of the algorithm. And I'll coach you on all of that. Uh, so when you sign up for Rob and I, you're getting both of us and things that he and I, uh, things that he and I both have unique to offer that, that may not be available to you from other Amsoil dealers who would like to sign you up as a dealer. And again, not to knock them, but Rob and I bring each bring something very unique to the table that could be very useful to you as an Amsoil dealer, as a new Amsoil dealer, to help you get started and get some momentum, get off on the right foot. And I'm I'm the very first one to tell anybody Amsoil is not a get rich scheme. Sure. But if you're interested in making an extra hundred, five hundred thousand, or ten thousand dollars a month on a part time base, it's available with Amsoil. Yeah, it's actually available to do. Yeah, and you can start with a very modest investment, and you can grow into it. Yes. You know, yes. let's say you you do it, and you've been doing it for a few years. You could get to where you're doing a, easily a few extra thousand dollars a month, yes. and you could get to the point where, hey, maybe I'll do this full time. Yes. And yes. and if you're like us and you enjoy enjoy boat shows, car shows, snowmobile shows, how would that be a full time income where you're you're just going to shows all the time? <laughs> you know, that's uh, that's do a what dream. You like to do. Yeah, yeah. For people like Rob and I, that's a dream. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, a dream. And Angelo has a number of divisions you can go towards. I've got one person. All he does is sign up preferred customers. Mm -hmm. He he offers people the very best possible price to buy the Amsoil. He doesn't have any AMS on his house. He doesn't sell it to anybody else. He just gives out catalogs, and then the catalogs are two prices. He tells them sign up, order themselves. So every month he gets a computer printout saying, here's all the people to order. Here's your commission check. And then I have other groups of people that only do retail and commercial. I got one guy. All he does is small engines. Well, he's into landscape companies. So he goes around the landscape companies and small engines and signs them up. And like a snowmobile shop, if you sign up a snowmobile shop, the AMSO will give them a 30-day payment plan. They buy $450 worth. They get free shipping. And the reason they like carrying the AMSO product, because AMSO will put them on their locator. So if you have a small engine shop and they, they buy $450 worth, they you send a picture of them into AMSO. And anybody within 100 kilometers goes on the AMSO site, looks for oil, a picture of their shop comes up. Nice. No other oil company does that for their customers. So they like having service that Amsoil offers to them. Yeah, that's a huge so, benefit right there. Yeah, yeah. And if uh, I got one guy, he's got a retail account that orders fifty thousand dollars worth four times a year. Wow. He gets he gets ten percent for a profit check and ten percent towards his commission credits. Yeah, that adds that's, up. That's a part time job for him. That's amazing. Now commercial accounts, you only get five percent, hmm. but a commercial account just doesn't buy a, a case of oil. They, they do trims. volumes. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, most of the skid steers and backhoes, and we got a lot of guys with uh, logging equipment. <laughs> they take three or four drums to fill that piece of equipment. Yeah. yeah. And I'm glad you brought that up, too, because there are quite a few different business models for someone who wants to do the AMSOIL business. We just talked about uh, a few here. You know, Rob does a lot with the shows. So if you like shows, that's one business model. Uh, if you like to do things online like I do, that's another business model. And then he talked about the commercial accounts, the retail accounts. There, there are a number of different business models. So, yeah. if, you know, if there's something that you specialize in or if you have certain types of contacts that that, that that are available to you you know contact us and we'll help tailor a business model uh to turn that into an opportunity for you yep yeah well cool can you I, believe I we've like been working in categories yeah for sure you're active in all of the categories yes that's yes. cool and a person says the guy you're talking to is a wealthy millionaire how'd you get him to sign up under amsoil i said do you keep your options open on how you make money yeah. The guy says, yeah. I said, well, here, here's my email. Send me an email. So before I get home from the show that day, I got an email from that guy saying, what are you talking about how to make money? I'm interested. <laughs> the guy's a millionaire. But that's why he's a millionaire because he knows how to make money. Yeah, and he's probably got his hand into more than one thing. Yep. Yeah, different activities for, to, to, to generate income for him. Yep, so he's already got some companies that could use the lubricants. 
Sure. Yeah. He probably had some good contacts. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. Very cool. Well, yeah, if you can believe we've been talking about Amsoil here for almost an hour. Um, we're about to wind it down, but any, any final thoughts, Rob, before we do that? You know what? It's a fun business. I worked for Jenna Motors for 30 years and five days and they came up to me and said, do you want an early retirement? <laughs> that was on a Monday. Do you want to retire on Friday? I said, I sure do. They said, don't you want to go home talking over with your wife? I said, no, she's not retiring. I am. <laughs> but I had a mother at that time that was sick and needed my help. Yep. So I took the opportunity. But if it wasn't for the Amsoil business, I wouldn't have been able to have the opportunity to take that option. Yes. And I was 48 years old when I retired from General Motors. Because of the extra money, Amsoil gave me the opportunity to do that. Yeah. And that then gave you more time to work on Amsoil and to, to build that up as well, I imagine. Yep. Yep. So sure. now my daughter wants to know when she can have the company. <laughs> oh, nice. nice. Yeah. Yeah, well, she's working on it now, so. Good, so she's already involved. Wonderful. Yeah. Now, we've got a comment that's come in. My good friend John Springer Jr. says he's been using semi-synthetic oil. Do you have to drain it all out before using the AMS oil? No. No. If you were running petroleum oil and you had 20,000 kilometers on your vehicle, we do recommend to put a flush in. Take the mm -hmm. filter off, put a cheap filter on, add a kind of flush, let it run for 20 minutes. That way, the oil starts off in a clean engine. If you're running a semi-synthetic, the engine should be partly clean. You shouldn't have to run a flush. Yeah. The people that have 80,000 kilometers in the car and they put 100% synthetic in and they phone me and say, my car is using oil now. I tell them, well, take your filter off, put another filter on because the synthetic oil will naturally clean the inside of the engine and a dirty oil will burn. Hmm. But uh, if you're running semi-synthetic before, you should be pretty clean. Good, good. Another question I, I meant to ask you, and I'm glad that, that reminded me of it. Uh, so I've got a 1992 ski -Doo Safari. It's got the 377 with the inject oil injection. Yes. It's got injection oil in it. Should I drain that before I put AMS oil injector oil, or can I put that in with the existing injector oil? And If it was the middle of the summer, I would say, yeah, take it out and put AMS oil in because you'll notice a benefit of AMS oil right off the bat. But sure. this time of year, no one wants to do that. AMS oil will mix with any other oil you have. So just top it off and, and keep going. Yep. Wonderful. Yep. Yeah, and we, a lot one of people have snow bill and they're running AMSOIL and they're in the middle of nowhere and their light comes on, they got to add oil. You can add any brand you want to AMSOIL. It's going to smell a little, but it's not sure. going to do any harm. Won't do any damage. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Oh, Some and then uh, you can't do that on. Sure. Sure. Now, John Spranger Jr., who made the comment earlier, he was, he, he's specifying he was talking about a snowmobile as opposed to a car. As far as, and this was the original question, uh, using semi-synthetic oil, does he have to drain it all out before using AMS oil? And he's talking about a snowmobile? No. No? Okay, no. good. No. Good. No. And John, we thank you for those questions, by the way. We really appreciate that. Yeah, yeah John's a good friend of mine, and we he's been with the podcast from the very beginning, uh, and we've been corresponding from the very beginning as friends, and uh, finally had a chance to meet him. He's out in Wisconsin, but he was, uh, over the holidays, he was visiting family here in Vermont, and uh, he wasn't too far away, so we got together and had lunch one day, had a really nice visit. I had a chance to meet him and the missus, and we had a really good time. Whereabouts in Wisconsin is he from? Eland. Eland, okay. Yeah. Okay. I'm heading to cool. Duluth this year. Duluth. Oh, nice. Superior, Wisconsin. Sure. Is that an event or something? Or Am Amso 50th anniversary party. Oh, no kidding. Yeah. yeah. Very nice. Very nice. Well, good. That sounds like a great time. Yeah. So cool. So unless there are any final thoughts here, we're going to give the last word as always to Amzo. We've got a little Amzo video that Rob and I made a few months ago. Any Anything else before we transition to that? Or? No, that's a good video. I like that. <laughs> yeah, that was fun to make. Yeah. yeah, that was fun. Well, cool. Well, thank you everyone for watching. We really appreciate it. Uh, appreciate your coming on and being a viewer. And we thank Rob for being here tonight. And uh, thank everyone who's either considering purchasing Amzo uh, under Rob and I or becoming a dealer. Uh, and also we thank the people who have been doing that along as well. We thank you so very much for that. And uh, yeah, have a have wonderful a evening. Night, All right, you too. Take care. Hello, everyone. This is Rob and Mike. How are you doing today, Rob? I'm doing good. Mike, yourself? Very well. Thank you so much for coming on. I appreciate it. Now, uh, today, we're going to be talking about AMSOIL. And uh, in a few moments, we're going to show you how you can get the deepest discounts, free shipping, and free gifts when you order your AMSOIL products through us. But first, I'm going to ask Rob to give you a quick description of what AMSOIL is and why you should consider using AMSOIL products in your motorized vehicles. Thanks, Mike. AMSOIL is 100% synthetic oil. Everybody uses AMSOIL for a different reason. Some people like the benefits that AMSOIL is warranted for 25,000 miles in one year. 
The reason we can do that is because amsoil doesn't oxidize. It doesn't form the usual carbons, gums, sludges like petroleum oils do. That's why we can keep it in the engines longer. Petroleum oils never do wear out. They oxidize themselves. That's why they have to be changed at 3,000 kilometers. And AMSO likes the benefit that you only have to change the oil once a year. That saves some money. Some of the people like the benefit of AMSO is it's a slipperier type lube. By having a slipperier type lube, it cuts down friction drag. By less friction and drag, engines run 20 to 50 degrees cooler, better gas mileage. Now, AMSO says 25% more protection than the industry requires is in the AMSO bottles. My average customer gets about 10% increase in gas mileage. That's a big savings. Yeah. And by cutting down friction and drag, for every 10 degrees you cut down the friction and drag, doubles the life of the engine. So by having the engine run cooler, it makes it last longer. Some people like the benefit of the range of the AMSO. AMSO's flash point is 425 degrees, and it pours at 50 below zero. Wow. If you ever tried petroleum oil when it's 10 below, it turns to the honey. And yep. in the summertime, petroleum oil thins out. And once it, once it thins out, that's when it starts breaking down. So AMSO is an all-season oil, can give you better gas mileage, longer engine life, less maintenance. It ends up being cheaper over a year's time running AMSO than it is petroleum oils. That's amazing. That's amazing. And AMSO is, is available for pretty much any motorized vehicle, uh, any from, anything from lawn equipment, cars, trucks, boats, ATVs, motorcycles, snowmobiles. Yep, yep. And a lot of people phone me up and say, well, what's the benefit of our gear loop? Exactly what I told you about the engine oil. It pours in cold weather, it runs cooler, makes the equipment last longer. And they say, well, what's the benefit of the small engine? Same thing, makes the engine run cooler, last longer, better performance. So it saves on all the applications that AMSO has available. Wonderful, wonderful. So yeah, let's uh, let's talk now. Uh, hopefully this has convinced people uh, to think about maybe joining us in the AMSOIL experience. Let's talk about some of the discounts and free shipping and how that all happens. I'm going to pop a, a graphic on the screen. And uh, yeah, by all means, if you want to talk talk people through how this preferred customer program works. AMSOIL has a number of different programs. One of our main ones is a catalog customer where somebody can order directly out of our catalog. If they order out of the catalog, they order $100 worth, AMSOIL ship it right to their house. But our best program is our preferred customer. For only $10 for six months, you become a preferred customer, you save 25% on all the product. You order $100 worth, they're going to give you free shipping. Um, you don't have to order a whole case. You can mix and match. Say you want four bottles of small engine, seven bottles of 5W30, and a couple of gear loops. You can mix and match. You can order one bottle at a time if you want. There's no minimums, no maximums. By being a preferred customer, you save over 25% on all the products you're going to buy. Amazon will send you extra gifts, uh, a $5 gift certificate on your birthday, $5 when you renew, renew your account, and stuff like that. So it's a good way to save on some of the products you want to buy. For sure, for sure. Yeah, it's an incredible value. And this is the, the deepest level of discount that anyone can get when ordering Amsoil. Is that correct? It is. It is. Wonderful, wonderful. So let's take people through the, the step-by-step -step experience of, of placing an Amsoil order. Then that would include signing up for the preferred customer discount, or sorry, preferred customer program so they can receive those deepest levels of discount. So let's go to the website. This is what the website's going to look at look like. These are some screenshots. If you Once you go to Amsoil.com, there's a link in the description, or you can just type that into a browser, Amsoil.com. This is the page you land on at the upper corner of the page there, you see how I've circled in red. That is the link to click, the join now link, that will take you to the preferred customer program page where you can take advantage of all these discounts and free shipping and everything that we've just been talking about. This is what that page looks like. In the lower right, you're going to click join now. This will pop up. You select the duration you'd like, whether it's six months or 12 months and click add to cart. Now, once this, this uh, pop-up goes away, you'll be back on the main page. And the upper left, you'll see where I've got that red arrow, it says shop. Now you can start shopping for products and on your very first order, you're going to get these discounts and the free shipping as long as it's over $100. You'll get all of these benefits right away. So once you click shop, it's going to take you to uh, some product, the product page. There's different types of oils, lubricants, so on and so forth. For the benefit of this exercise we're doing now, I'm just going to click motor oil. It shows different types of motor oil. Let's click gasoline. Now this takes us to an item. It's uh, their synthetic motor oil. And you can see the item there and there's choices for different viscosities. But take a look at the price. Let's take a closer look. Let's zoom in. Uh, but if you've join the preferred customer program first, you're going to automatically get the deepest levels of discount. That's what we're looking at here. You're saving $3.80 on that quart of oil. Instead of paying $16.29, you're now paying, paying $12.49 for that quart of oil. That is the deepest level of discount you can possibly get. And then uh, you just add the, the, the quantity that you'd like. You select any other items that you're thinking about, add them to the cart. And once you uh, click add to cart for the final time, you're going to see this come up at the top of the screen. It's going to show your items and your, your um, the total that you're at so far. <coughs> Pardon me. And then now uh, you just click view cart in the upper right and that'll take you to your cart. Uh, take a close look here at the upper right, that blue box shows that you're getting free shipping. You're eligible for free shipping on this order because it's over $100. That little yellow box shows that you've got the preferred customer membership on your order that gives you the deepest levels of discounts for the next six to 12 months. And then below that, you've got the, the items that have been selected. I just, for the exercise here, I selected nine quarts of this signature series, but that brings us up over $100 for the free shipping. We're saving $34.20. $34 and if you're ready to, to finish, you click checkout now, and that takes you uh, to this screen here. If you haven't signed up, with an Amsoil account at this point, just click in the lower right to create an account, create a new account. It's going to ask you for some basic information, a name and those types of things. 
Now, let's take a closer look. You'll see this gray shaded box. This is a very important box. This is going to ask you if someone has referred you to AMSOIL. And if so, please enter my name. My name is Mike LaPierre. It's spelled right there on the screen for the correct spelling. And also the referral number, 304-555-94. That's how um, you make sure that Rob and I get credit for this. Now, in the interest of full disclosure, I have signed up for AMSOIL under Rob. So when you order using this referral number, Rob and I both benefit. So if you enjoy these podcasts that we're doing, this is a wonderful way to support the podcast because when you order uh, using this referral number, Rob and I both benefit. And the commissions I make go directly toward offsetting the cost of doing this pod these podcasts. So I thank you in advance for that, for using my referral number. I very much appreciate it. Uh, and once you've done that, you just go into the next screen to enter your payment information and you're done. Now, once you've entered, once you've placed your order, that's over $100, uh, and that, that order includes your AMSOIL preferred customer program, you are now eligible to get a free DVD from myself. Now, this is going to be either a muscle car DVD or a vintage snowmobile DVD. Uh, use the email address on the screen, wkspodcasts at gmail.com. Send me an email. Let me know which email. I'm sorry. Let me know which DVD you would like me to send you, the muscle car or the uh, uh, vintage snowmobile DVD, and I'll get that right out to you. As you're typing in that, that email in the subject line, be sure and type in capital letters, free DVD requests. So it stands out as I'm checking my email, and we'll get that right out to you. So I guess the last thing, Rob, that we wanted to talk about is uh, if someone is considering Amsoil as a business opportunity. Um, yeah. Yes. If anybody has a retail or a commercial account and they would like to buy directly from Amazon, just send Mike a line. He'll show you how to set up and you can buy directly from Amazon. But if you are interested in starting your own part-time business, a part-time business that can grow into a full-time income, Mike and I will show you the Amazon marketing plan. Amazon has a large selection of products to cover almost every application. So it doesn't matter if you're into snowmobile, boating, or ATV and or, or hot rods. We have an oil for every application. It's a fun type business. That's I really enjoy doing. Where else can I go and have fun and make money doing it? And Mike and I are here to help you all the way along. If you need any help on how to promote or or to find new accounts, we're here to help you. For sure, for sure. So when you sign up under that uh, that number, this 304-555-94, you're getting Rob and I as a team. Now, Rob has been doing AMSO for 40 years. Can you believe that? 40 years. So he knows every aspect of this business and he knows all of the ins and outs of the products. So he'll be able to help you with any kind of product questions or any kind of questions to show you the different business models that you can do with AMSO. And then the other thing that you get when you sign up under me is I've got a strong background in social media. So if you need some coaching on how to generate AMSO leads using Facebook and YouTube, I'm happy to coach you with that when you sign up under Rob and I. Uh, you get both of us as a team uh, to help you, to coach you, to support you, whatever you need to get you, get you off and running with this business and having fun with it. Like Rob said, it's enorm an enormous amount of fun. If you're like Rob and I and you enjoy going to any kind of you know boat shows, car shows, motorcycle shows, snowmobile shows, anything with a motor, you like going to those shows, those events, those races, this is a great way to turn that into a, 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 a income opportunity for you. Yes, yes. And just by wearing my AMSO hat at one of these events, people come up and ask me about AMSO. People, people don't know where to buy it, and I'm there to help them, show them where they can buy the product. Perfect, perfect. Well, cool, cool. Well, this is great. Uh, any final thoughts, Rob, before we wrap it up? AMSO is a fun business. AMSO has been around since 1968. You know, it was the first synthetic oil to be AI approved. Wow. Yeah. That's amazing. And that's very early in the game too, isn't it? Yes. For sure. Well, good. Well, thank you so much, everyone, for viewing. Hopefully, we've gotten you excited, as excited as we are about the AMSOIL products. We'd love it if you could, enjoy, if you could join us either uh, as someone who uses the AMSOIL products or to join the AMSOIL team uh, as a business opportunity. And we thank you so much for viewing. Have okay. a great day. You have a good day.